It's 420, the time of year and the time of day that's forever associated with getting high. Back in 1971, a group of San Rafael, California high school kids used that time, 420, to smoke weed after school. And over the last 40 years, their slang term for getting stoned has exploded into a full-blown holiday devoted to the culture of cannabis. Now, with medical marijuana legalized in over 15 states and dozens of countries, the green is rapidly spreading across the U.S. and the globe. So sit back, grab some munchies, and join us as we circle the planet looking for the kindest bud around. It's Attack of the Show's 420 Special. 420! Welcome to Venice Beach, California, a place where weed is legal, as long as you have your medical card. But if you don't, you're probably too baked to care, so <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm Candace Bailey. And I'm Kevin Pereira. And if 420 is your favorite holiday, well, you're in luck, my friends, because Attack of the Show is going to explore the stoner lifestyle. We'll visit the grow farms of California's infamous Emerald Triangle. Take you to a High Times event in Denver for a serious rocket mountain. Ah. Fly you around the globe to the span of his cup in Barcelona, Spain. And head to Brazil with Sarah Underwood for pot news from around the world. Hey. Hey. What's up? Thank you. Oh, her. <laughs> We begin in California, the state with some of the most liberal marijuana laws. Yeah, here actually medicinal marijuana is legal, provided that you have a doctor's recommendation. And now that the government has declared that the feds won't raid dispensaries anymore. Venice Beach has become quite the hub of business, if I may. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, you can't spit without hitting a bong shop or a passed out hippie on the strand. But here at the Medical Kush Beach Club, you can get a permit, buy a joint, and smoke up all in less than an hour. I got some time to kill. <laughs> with Sean Cush, who actually owns this joint. This joint. Right <laughs> well, tell us about the Medical Cush Beach Club. Well, the Medical Cush Beach Club, I opened it four and a half years ago. Smoking lounge, beach views, hash bar. People are wanting to smoke on the beach, and I was figuring, let's make an area where you could smoke upstairs. There was nothing in the rules and regulations nothing. and laws that says you couldn't do it? Nothing in it. So really? I went to the city, and I go, I want to make a state smoking lounge and they go okay and they gave it to me and now they're not doing anything like that next door is medical kush doctor so mm -hmm. you can go in there and get your recommendation and if you get approved through the doctor then you go right upstairs I'm fascinated with anybody who's willing to come out in support of cannabis as anything that's recreational, as anything that's, of course, medicinal. And I'm curious as to what turned you on to looking towards cannabis as a treatment. My son has multiple sclerosis, and it has done marvelous things for him. He has no spasms of his legs or arms. How many people do you have that come in here that are just completely bogus? Maybe one or two a day. The one that was so dumb, he didn't write some phony excuse. He put down, I like to get high. <laughs> Can you show us the steps sure. that you would go through? Right. We would check what his medical reason was mm -hmm. on this sheet. And then we do a physical. It was 120 over 80, which is perfect. Boom. Candace, hold him. I'm going to cough. <laughs> This is how they hold them. <laughs> you look like you're receiving a donation at church, sorry. <laughs> They're verified, they have the recommendation. Yeah. Come on in here. Are these all the prices right here? Yeah, you can get grams anywhere starting from $12 on up to $22, yeah, that's our highest gram. We got the best strains in the world. We got like cannabis cup winners, like this kosher kush mm -hmm. is a cannabis cup winner number one. Can you show us purple polka dotted poopy pants? Yeah, I got some purple poopy pants right here. I'll that's purple poopy pants? <laughs> It's not a real joint. That's just a, that's okay. That's all C. This is all CG. Everything you're seeing here is none of that's none of that's real. Uh oh. No. Uh -oh. No. 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 <laughs> we lost Bailey.
<laughs> everything is full service here. So you just come, you sit down, look at the menu, and we do everything. You don't even have to touch the bombs. This is the menu right here where you can order the shots for here, or you can get a half a gram to go. And you're looking at all types of hashes right here. You're looking at anything from an ice cold water hash to the oxygen CO2 processes. So how does a shot work? A shot is basically three to four hits. Now does anyone ever smoke too much to where you have to cut them off? Yeah, where's the half drunk sailors singing karaoke songs or? We got the half medicated people in the corner. Ah, all right, that's good. <laughs> that works. Sean, in five years time, where do you see the hash bar? Where do you see medicinal marijuana? Totally. Um... <laughs> That's the answer. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Where do you see medicine marijuana in five years? Totally. <laughs>Do you know what Venice Beach needs? What? An oxygen bar. Yeah, that was a skunky Glade plug-in up there. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the cool thing about this place is that they have such a variety. You can buy whatever you want, but there's even cooler places that actually grow everything on site. In fact, there's a facility hidden in the middle of Palm Springs with over 10,000 square feet dedicated to just that. And guess what? It's harvest time! We're here with Stacy Hokanettle. Now, Stacy, is this place a collective or a dispensary? It's a collective. A dispensary would be a place where anyone could come in and purchase medicine, but a collective is a group of people that sign up, work together to grow the medicine and provide the medicine for other sick patients. We have 28 different strains right now in the back room that are growing. Did you say you have, you have over 20 right here, right now, growing on site? 28 <laughs> particular strands. Please tell me we can see it. We'll have to put you in the volunteer position and see if you can come up here and, and look at some of these plants and maybe we'll put you guys in the chair and put some scissors in your hand and see if Let's we can see do it. Yeah. And it is fire season, so if we have to do a controlled burning, <laughs> totally down to help. This is basically where we would grow the patient's medicine back here that they would be able to get here in this front counter area. Okay. okay. With this much square footage and all these plants, how many patients can this facility actually provide for? Enough medicine for about 4,700 patients. 4,700? So what does it take to actually maintain a facility like this? Uh, staff about 14 volunteers. There's 47 tons of air conditioning in the building. The lights in here obviously are somewhat simulating the outside sun environment. It can produce headaches. Yeah, you know, it can I already problems with the them. eyes. So. Yeah. Well, they, they have a little something for your headache if you oh, need it. Oh, yeah. do they? I think yeah, they have just they? the thing. I feel like the uh, party's about to start because we have the latex gloves on. So what yes. you'll do is you'll take your left hand and basically put it around the base of the plant here. Cut here. Ooh, get in there. Get in there, Candy. Yeah, it's a little Put them in fries. <laughs> Put them fries up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, buddy. I love you. I promise you're going to a loving home. Mazel tov. Ah, oh, it's a boy. Peekaboo. I feel like I'm at the Wonka factory. Well, since I have two Oompa Loompas here, I guess we can take these plants to go upstairs and start trimming them now. Basically what we'll end up doing here is you guys are going to take the plant and cut off a smaller stalk. But from cutting it off the stem to cutting it into a smaller size to now cutting into actual final trim where you're actually now detailing the nug. I think if we just, uh, I don't know, white flash, we'll have a lot more done. Ah, uh, see that's all you need around here, some good old fashioned white flashes. Done. Flash on. That was a sticky high five. <laughs> um, Alright, so what's the next step? I'll take you guys over to the drying room and we'll show you guys how we use the machine to basically dry these buds so they'll be ready for sale. And what's this Cadillac behind us? It's what's in there? special box definitely keeps the humidity at a certain level. And how much can you dry in here in one go? It's about 140 pounds in one set. It's cooking show time. Yes. Candace is just go. pushing it off the table <laughs> into her pockets. Hey, to you got it up there. Go ahead, Candace. No, I need your help. No, no, you got it. You got it. No. Really, you're fine. Okay, okay, okay. Are you sure? Don't tell me to do it if you don't really mean it. Well, I figure this is like the oven. It's the kitchen. This is where the woman should be. Mama don't cook. <laughs> You could lick any surface in this building and pretty much be stoned for a year. Pull this out, Candace. I will. You got this once again. Don't mind me. 
Well, oh, look at that. What just had, what's the I weight difference, would you say, between a, a wet tray versus a dry tray? It shrinks by about two-thirds, I would say. From seed in the soil to right here, right now, dried, ready to go, what is the entire harvest time? Goodbye. Ten weeks right there. Now, this is some beautiful marijuana, ready to smoke. Gold, so that's the next step then. Yep. Goodbye. Her I think she's had a friends. little, we'll little put too the, much of the old harvest. We'll put yeah, the babies I, together. I, I, oh, wow. I'm Under just head. saying my goodbyes to all of no, them individually. No, of course, of course, Candace. One goodbye. after one after one after one. Goodbye. Well, just, uh, Candace will be here for a while, goodbye. so. She's fine, she's fine. We're good, we're good. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Shut off the lights, you're done. Okay. Goodbye. Oh, Palm Springs has a hearty supply of the weed. But planet Earth is full of amazing marijuana news. Sarah Underwood is in Brazil to find it all out for you. Why the hell did we send Sarah to Brazil? I don't know. Hi, I'm Sarah Underwood. I'm here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to bring you pot news from around the world. It is time to start the weed feed. All the news you need to know. For the first time ever, a federal agency has admitted that pot has actual medicinal properties. The National Cancer Institute has finally gone on record saying that marijuana has positive benefits when used in the treatment of cancer. This is a big deal since the NCI's recognition could change the status of pot to a Schedule 3 drug rating, which is a fancy way of saying that a Cancer Institute endorsement could help open weed up to decriminalization, federal taxation, and more legitimacy. I'm Sarah Underwood in Brazil, and you've just been fed the news munchies. And that guy in a Speedo. Still ahead, we'll visit California's infamous Emerald Triangle to find out where the best bud in America is grown. Plus, we go Rocky Mountain High in Denver to present the High Times Award for Best Colorado Cannabis. And Sarah Underwood heads to Brazil for a next-to-naked visit to Carnival. All this and more when Attack comes back. If you want to know just how progressive the medical marijuana movement has become, you have to go to Seattle's All Weed Farmers Market. It's dedicated to everything THC. But as fate would have it, our flight to Seattle got canceled. So now all we're left to do is imagine what it would be like. Yeah, that's right, Candace. Just imagine. 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 Are you imagining? Hi, Candice. Welcome to the Cannabis Farmer's Market. Do you have your authorization with you? All right. It's perfect. Thank you much. Come on inside. So we have about 40 providers in the building today, all giving safe access to Seattle and Tacoma's medical marijuana patients. We have everything from flowers to tinctures to topical sprays, every possible mix of cannabis that you could ever use for medicine. I brought you a basket. I hope you fill it all the way up. Everyone's a winner, bargains the Lord. Free samples. Check out this bubble gum. It's a very uppity, happy medicine. See how nice and soft that is? See those crystals in there? And if it smells fruity and delicious, like deliciousness on a stem, then it's perfect. Here, smell this. This is $10 a gram. All right, here you go, 2.2 grams. Welcome to Mary Jane's Herbals. We specialize in glycerin tinctures. You can eat it orally, put it in teas and coffees as a sweetener. One full dropper is one dose, which is 10 drops. You'll start feeling it within a few minutes and it'll last up to a few hours. It sells at $20 a bottle. Would you like two of them? Hey, come on in here. This is the Green Care and Wellness Center. We specialize in top-notch medicinal medicine. One of our top flavors here, this is Super Lemon Haze. It's 70% sativa, 30% indica, and it's good for creativity. This is our best indica here. This is Bubba Kush. It's good for sleep, pain. Here's both of them up close. The one on the right is Bubba Kush. 
and the one on the left is Super Lemon Haze. Those are the top medicine that we carry at our dispensary. Would you like a $10 donation? This is my salsa. It's probably my biggest seller. Would you like to try some? So you have your medicinal marijuana card, but now you have a problem. There are thousands of different strains of cannabis out there, and you don't know which one has the proper dosage of sticky or the right amount of the icky. Well, that's why you come to Steep Hill Labs to get it tested and certified. Since 2007, Oakland's Steep Hill Lab has been working to standardize the cannabis industry. What goes on in this room? We do potency analysis, microbiological analysis, and pesticide analysis. This is kind of what it's about for Stepo, right? What that tells a patient is that we tested this particular product. And so these are some of the products that have actually been through Steep Hill, right? You've yeah, got edibles. Are, we have cookies and brownies, tinctures. There's a soda. So when it comes to testing, let's say I'm just a sample. I've arrived at, in your facility. What is step one? We intake the sample. Once a sample arrives, Steep Hill does a visual scan for mold. Statue botrytis is the most common form of bud mold. It's the gray bud mold that many people see with their eyes. So First, right away, you see that, yeah. you're gone. If it passes the mold test, extracts are taken and run through the gas chromatograph, an instrument used to measure potency using vapors. The gas chromatograph uses heat to separate the compounds. And if your method of ingestion is burning or smoking a joint, right. then it's a better representation of right. what that potency level is going to be for you. Yes. The way we measure the amount of THC is we take pure THC and we run it through the instrument. And then we can take arbitrary amounts, like what we've extracted from a bud, run it through the machine, and compare it to those known amounts. And the results are in. And this is definitely marijuana. What you tend to see in most cannabis is a lot of THC. This big peak here is THC. <laughs> most breeders over the last 30 years have been selecting cannabis for potency. They know uh, the stuff with a lot of crystals sells a lot, and the stuff that gets my customers really, really high sells, so right. there we go. When the tests are done, the inspected product is bagged and nitrogen sealed for delivery to the client. All right, so there you have it. After about 10 days, the final packing process is complete. It's now been certified and sealed, and you know exactly what you're getting, thanks to Steep Hill. You're watching the Attack of the Show 420 special. Still ahead, Alex Simwise heads to smoky Barcelona for the Spanibus Cup. See international weed and amazing mullets. Business at the front, stoner at the back. If everything in the world was 420, we'd all be wearing tie-dye t-shirts and wait until night comes to see the moonrise that would look like Candace Bailey's head. And we'd all worship Miss Bailey for 420. I love you, Candace Bailey. Marco! Solo! Marco! Uh, Solo! 
That's weed, right? Candace is it's weed, right? Right now, we're about three hours north of San Francisco in an area known as the Emerald Triangle. It consists of three different counties, Humboldt, Mendocino, and Trinity. Yeah, right now we're in the middle of Trinity County. And honestly, cannabis here is way more than just like an evening time release or yes. something the cool kids do by the flagpole. Here it's a way of life. All right, generally I wake up around 4. Yeah, I'm smoking and it's 4.20 a.m. Trinity County resident Mike Booten of Grace Farms Collective has been involved in the cannabis industry for over 35 years. What can you tell us about Weaverville and how it was established? It was established around gold, it's a gold area, part of the rush of 49. Over time, we became a timber county. When did it switch from lumber to weed? There's always been, since back to the 60s, cannabis grown in Trinity County in the Emerald Triangle. Here's a replica of a uh, cabin of the day. This is sort of indicative of the original gold rush. Would you say that there's like a, a green rush now in this town? Oh, absolutely. In 1996, California voters passed Proposition 215, which made it legal on a statewide level to grow and distribute medical marijuana. Despite objections from the federal government, Prop 215 was a green light for growers like Randy Martin, who saw that the triangle was the ideal spot to set up shop. We walked in this place, cliche Bob Marley playing on the stereo. I mean, come on now, what's that about, Randy? I like the plants like it. <laughs> there's some people pointing fingers, saying, you're coming in, there's loud raves, there's gunshots going over fences, it's all that stuff. Are you that out-of-towner? I moved into a neighborhood that just had a few opinions that anybody involved with medical marijuana, or marijuana at all, is just an evil person. They're saying that the smell is affecting the environment. The smell. <laughs> um, I was outside. I didn't smell anything. I didn't smell exactly. anything either. <laughs> you all right? Would you just poke yourself in the eye with some weed? The majority of this county and this area are involved with marijuana. Was From, this was this pre Prop 215 or is this all post Prop 215? No, post. Totally. Post. Back in the days, it was the gorilla stuff. You're talking, the, the you're talking about the mountain. Yeah, thing. yeah. And one who has seen the evolution of the triangle from the beginning is B. E. Smith. Vietnam f me up. I need my medicine. Whoa. How long have you been here? 30 years. I came to this area as a timber logger. I fell in love with it. I was ready to get out of the system. Got my wife, sold my house, went into the back country on a gold mining claim and started growing pot. I didn't grow it to make money. I grew it so that I wouldn't have to go back out in society again. The old days was tough. You had to walk on rocks to get to your garden because you didn't want a cop to be falling. And you had to hide them underneath trees so the helicopters couldn't spot them from the air. Right after Prop 215, you were the first person to go to federal court. Yes. Correct. Yes. I was coming back from watering. Helicopters was flying around, and 42 marshals and two deputy sheriffs showed All up. All for you? Mm -hmm. All for me. The state didn't want to prosecute me because they knew that I could beat them under Prop 215, uh -huh. so they turned it over to the feds. They gave me 27 months in, in prison. What was that like? Like being locked down in a motel six. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Seriously. <laughs> That's terrible. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> well, what'd you do when you got out? Started growing pot again. <laughs> <laughs> and he was not alone. Grow farms sprouted like weeds. After Barack Obama took office in 2009, the Federal Department of Justice announced that they would no longer seek prosecutions in situations where state and federal law conflicted. Everybody's flocking out to Trinity County in the mountains and buying up all the land and popping in gardens overnight, cutting down all the trees, and then leaving. Uh, what is the town doing about that? They've put a cultivation moratorium to give them some time to come up with the right way to use land as commercial cannabis production. Is that a good solution? Is that the wrong approach? I don't think it's going to help much at all. It's still going to be people coming from out of town. They didn't do nothing about residency in there, and that's what they're complaining about mostly. And although the future of the Emerald Triangle is hazy, the cannabis industry will surely continue to flourish. If marijuana is going to be legal someday, I want to see it hold its name to where we brand it. Hopefully it's like Napa. A weed tasting tour sounds way more interesting. <laughs> you see that? Oh, 
what about like a, a Philip Morris coming into town and saying, well, great, you know what, we're going to do this now and we're going to try to trademark it do. and do our own strength? You do. Nothing would make our AAA top shelf organic product look better than to have somebody <laughs> like Philip Morris come in and go, oh, hell, that's easy. We got this. A bad day growing weed is better than a good day working, eh? We don't have logging in Trinity County. We don't have gold mining. There's no work. Growing pot. If it supports you and your family, go for it. So forget the, the, the fact that there might be exploitations in this medical loophole. It's really about everybody should have access to it. Why the hell not? Yeah, why not? Don't ever deny a child something to eat because the government says you can't do nothing. Because if you do, you don't have balls. All right, so we might be nestled right in the heart of California's weed movement, the old Emerald Triangle. But the love of ganja is international, so much so that Spain is hosting Spanibus. Yeah, Alex Simwise is there right now, and she has her hands on what might actually be the best bud in the world. Well, it's not spooky. ¿Dónde está la marihuana? Yeah. Ole. Oh my God. Let's check out Spanibus. Year, Barcelona, Spain becomes marijuana mecca as growers, seed banks, hemp companies and well over 18,000 potheads from around the world converge under one roof for Spanabis. So this is what all the fuss is about. It just looks like a really weird plant. It is a really weird plant. Ooh, chocolate hemp balls. Hey dude, do you mind if I put your balls in my mouth? What the hell is this? It's a classic device used to vaporize medical marijuana. Rather than actually burning the plant material, it's yeah. actually vaporizing the crystals that contain the THC. You might think that it's smoke, but it's actually vapor. There's a lot of mullet dreadlocks. Business at the front, stoner at the back. <laughs> One of the main events here is the Cannabis Champions Cup, and winning it means big business for the seed companies here. Next to the High Times Cannabis Cup in Amsterdam, the Spanibus Championship Cup is probably the next largest cannabis competition in the world. Seed breeders are rated on potency, aesthetic qualities like aroma, taste, and overall look. What are you entering this year? LSD. Very good medical marijuana, very good pain relief. We're yeah. entering our, our product, which is the big butter cheese. It's the previous cannabis cup winner. Wow, that's a lot of weed. You know, hopefully they've enjoyed what we've turned in. I don't, I don't remember again. <laughs> you don't remember which one. <laughs> one of the negative things that go along with this medicine is short-term memory loss and munchies. What's my name again? I want to say Lisa. <laughs> At the end of the day, Spanabis is all about which is the best strain in Spain. There are first, second and third place prizes in four categories. Indoor, outdoor bio, outdoor hydro and resin. First place for hydro, second place for resin and second place for exterior which is outdoors. It's high to enjoy Spanibus, but there's something about the air that I'm finding really intoxicating. And for some reason, those sweets look really, really good. I've, I've won everything. Oh my god, fresh air. I need fresh air. I need, I need fresh air. It, it. This June, the world's biggest video game event descends on Los Angeles, and G4, the official broadcast partner, has your exclusive pass to a metric ton of live E3 coverage. We'll bring you the biggest press events, more hands-on game demos, and more live coverage than ever before. See the games that will shape pop culture for years to come when G4 brings you E3 2011 Live this June. It's Attack of the Show's 420 special, and there's plenty more weed still to come. We head to Denver's High Times Medical Cannabis Cup to find out which award-winning strains manage to draw this many stoners off their couches. If every day was like 420, it would be like riding Balcor from the never-ending story through the Tron grid and having tea with manatee unicorns. That's what it would be like. Word. Hi, I'm Sarah Underwood. I'm here on the beach in Brazil, and it's time.
time for some more marijuana news. It's time to start the weed feed. All the news you need to know. Weed feed! Weed feed! Could legal marijuana soon be making more money than Viagra? A new study has found that medical marijuana is currently making nearly $1.7 billion in annual sales. That means it's just a few million dollars behind Viagra's $1.9 billion annual sales, and medical cannabis is only legal in 15 states. The study was the first of its kind ever conducted on medical pot sales and indicates that serious investors may want to turn their attention to the budding marijuana market. I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. Happy 420, guys. As the science behind medicinal marijuana improves, so do the services. For example, if you're too sick, or you're just too stoned and lazy to get off your couch, there's a collective that'll deliver weed right to your door. Uh... Hey, Hi. what's up? How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. How you been? Good. So, uh, according to my watch, it's been more than 30 minutes. Do I get something for free? That's right. <laughs> so, you want to show me what you have? For sure. We have everything from herb to cookies to little cannabis honey, pre-rolled joints. You know, really, we can bring everything. These are all the different kinds. What we do when we come to a patient's home is they never have to pre-order with us. We show them a menu. They have a chance to see everything that's available. They can even pay with their credit card. How much does something like this cost? Our lowest dates are start at 50. It can go as high as 70, uh, but that includes your tax and your delivery. Can you explain to me what Artist Collective is? Artist Collective is a nonprofit, and our goal ultimately is to build our organization up to the point where we can dedicate hopefully millions of dollars a year to help support the art community. We have a great website. The first thing that a patient will do, come to our pre-verification. They can also see us on Twitter. All they have to do is fill out the little form, give us their name. We need their doctor's info. They click send. So what's a typical delivery process like? I just got a call. You want to go? Check Absolutely. It Let's, Let's do it. it. So what happens if you get pulled over by the cop? I would show them my medical paperwork. I would show them all of our nonprofit paperwork from the state. Never been pulled over, knock on. Uh, <laughs> My first delivery. Your first delivery. Hey, Ryan, hey. what's up? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, How good you doing? to see you. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Come on in. Our client, Ryan, a budding rock star, may look the part of the recreational stoner, but looks are deceiving. Tell me what's going on with you. I was diagnosed with the cancer. That a lot of the harsh stuff is kind of over, but I still have, you know, little things that come up because it's a soft tissue bone cancer so sometimes I get like random pains. Usually uh, indicas work pretty well for me because I usually have trouble sleeping yeah. and pain. So you were completely straight edge before this right? Yeah. You had yeah. never? First time I've ever tried it was for the medical conditions that I have. How did you find out about these guys? Yelp actually. I used oh, really? the Yelp thing because it's supporting a good cause and we're all helping each other. Now so. do you like the fact that he just delivers it to you? It's really awesome because at this point I actually do not have a vehicle. The way that it works for, for a returning patient, we already know who he is, so it's as simple as him shooting us a text. We come, we bring our little mobile dispensary with. Which one do you think would be probably uh, it's, uh, stronger? I think the orange fish is definitely going to give you a head and body effect. Brian, since it's 420, uh, this is on the house today. Thanks, sure. man. I think everyone should... You know, know a little bit about you know cannabis and how it works, and I don't know everything about it. You don't? <laughs> he that, does. That's, that's why they have me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really Thank you guys for coming. It's the Attack of the Show 420 special, and we've saved the best for last. We go mile high for Denver's Weed Fest to end all Weed Fests. The High Times Medical Cannabis Cup up next. How cool that is. This is the butthole. I don't know how this works. I think you put your lips to it. No, oh, you're supposed to put your in the Yeah, that's what they call it. Look, it's... Hey, Kevin, I have a question for you.
for you. Yes, Candace Bailey. What's the best weed in the country? Ah, uh, funny you should ask. That's why we're here in the aptly named Mile High City at the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup to find out which weed will reign supreme. <laughs> Tell us about the event that's going on today. We're picking out the best strains in Colorado right here. Over the last week, we've been judging them. And huh. tonight, we're going to have the award show, and uh, we're going to pick out the best sativa, best indica, best hybrid, hash, edibles. It's all there. Who actually comes to exhibit at the Cannabis Cup? Basically, anybody who's got a cannabis business, whether they've got a pipe, whether they've got a dispensary, whether they're selling T-shirts, and it serves two people, consumer and the cultivator. <laughs> I would hang out with anybody that has that. This is the all-in-one e smoking system. It'll fit any mini big lighter. It comes with a quartz glass one hitter and a stainless steel poker. On the opposite end uh, is your product reservoir. It holds four grams of medicine in there. And then whenever you take the top and the bottom of the all-in-one, e put them together and it makes a little mini grinder. And it's a That's screw, so, cool. so you still gotta work it back and forth. If you're in the field of battle, you need to medicate. Let's go. Okay, starting with the grinder on top. Okay, very smart. Flips it over, lighter in. Get it, poker done, cap it off, cap it off. Now run, run! Out of there. You can pretty much just yell anything at you guys, that's awesome. Wait, I forgot it! Yeah, exactly, what are you doing? Tell me about those, those products again, please. Yeah, this is the Iolite, it's juicy and charged, and people love this because they can take a skiing with them. Yeah, it's just some, some, some sweet, sweet products. Hey, hey, hey! But, ah, let me see these products. What we got is Colorado's first fully medicated, fully carbonated soft drink. This is the low dose, 30 milligrams of THC. It's a cold water based. You can see the hash floating around in the bottoms on these bottles. Yeah. residue down there. Cheers. <laughs> Medication. <laughs> what? It's medicine. It's just water. The Incredible is a virtually indestructible smoking tube. Wait, did you say indestructible? Virtually indestructible. It's my personal unit that I use all the time. I use it every day. Points and all right, that right. Nothing. Um, it's like an old steamroller. You load up a glass bowl, light, inhale, the tube fills with smoke and expands and cools. Then you carb it, spring-loaded carb. Uh, that changes the pressure differentials. So. And so it automatically shoves down into your lungs. The incredible truly is incredible, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Are you all right? You all right? This thing really does take a hit. thing that gathers lots of happy people, shining people, and they play music and they samba. Did somebody like me get in the parade? Uh, I don't know if you know someone. <laughs> I gotta know somebody. Yeah, or pay someone. <laughs> or pay someone? Tell me about your costume. A minha roupa representa a água. A minha fantasia vem representando uma índia, que é o tema da minha escola esse ano. Can you teach me how to samba a little bit? Can you show me a step or two? Okay. You have the most amazing Brazilian booties. How do I get one of those? Já nasceu. Os peitos foram colocados, mas a bunda já nasceu aqui.
Now, we sent Sarah Underwood to Brazil for what exactly? Weed? Uh, well, uh, mostly to run around carnival half naked. No. Okay, now it's making sense. Of course. And now we're here to find the best weed in Denver. Yeah, and all the candidates are in this room. But the question is, who do you think will win? I think everyone in here is a winner. Here at the High Times Cannabis Cup, nearly 80 dispensaries are on hand, dosing the crowd with free samples of their entries. 46 Indicas, 36 Sativas, and 50 hybrids all competing under one very hazy roof. What is happening here at the, the Kennesaw booth? Well, this is Flight 420. Uh, basically, we're showing off our newest strain, our Purple Fantasy. Yeah. This is a predominant indica. It's okay. 75. Wow. It'll relax you enough to fall asleep, but if you do want to do something, you can. It doesn't couch lock you. <laughs> Some uh, okay. weed over there. What exactly is Joints for Japan? Everything that we made from selling joints inside of the stores, we are donating to Japan. What are you entering here today? Raspberry cough and cheese bubble hash. Today we have the Blackberry Kush. It's a heavy indica. Can I smell it? Yeah, absolutely. Put your nose in there. Explore it. I smell the Blackberry. After exploring the very smoky medication room, it was time to see whose grow was best in show. Okay, so without further ado, the last two categories. Big. <laughs> and here to tell us the winners from G4 Attack of the Show, we have Candace Bailey and Kevin Pereira. Yeah. Pull it out, guys. Come on. <laughs> Greetings, fellow glaucoma sufferers. First place. Indica Cup winner, Banana Kush from Mile High Green Crow. The Banana Kush smells like banana lappy taffy and kind of tastes like it. We use a lot of sugar in our growing processes. That comes out in the product. And last, but certainly not least, first place, Sativa Cup winner. It's Snow Dog from Natural Alternatives for Health Dispensary. Snow Dog, the Bubble Chem Cross, it's very sativa dominant. The smell is very fuel-like with pine tendencies. It's a real honor to even be involved with this kind of event. Yeah, it feels great. Love him with loud noises yeah. and applause. From the backyards of the Emerald Triangle in California. You see that? Through the Rocky Mountain highs of Colorado. Hey, that guy. And all the way to Spain. <laughs> oh, my God. We've shown you the best buds on earth and left no nug unturned. And that will do it for our 420 special. I want to thank Alex Simwise. I want to thank Sarah Underwood. On behalf of Attack of the Show and everyone here. Stay tuned. The Web Suit 420 special starts right now.